Mark Andreessen said something interesting that the intersection of biotech and AI uh, it, it is, is a, a space that's very ripe. I've for heard disruption. this idea before somewhere. And I'm curious right. what you think of that since you invest so heavily in biotech and you think about it so much. What do you think the impact on AI, of AI on bio, it's, will actually uh, be? It's completely underestimated. We've been thinking and talking about this for a number of years. Uh, and I'll give you just a quick example um, around machine learning or AI. Mm -hmm. uh, in, if you look at a product called Google, Photos, which is an app you can download, it will find every minute picture of you in your phone, even ones that you might not recognize yourself. And if you take that same technology and apply it to something like neoantigens, which are um, uh, kind of a way to detect cancer, and you apply that machine learning technology uh, to uh, the search for uh, new diagnostics for cancer, it, the, it's going to revolutionize the entire healthcare industry. You're investing in a company called Grail, which is, is very early diagnostic for cancer. It may even identify cancer before it becomes cancer. I'm curious about that. How do you handle things like over testing or, I mean, it seems like that shouldn't be a problem, um, but you know the idea seems almost no. too extreme. It's a that's a liquid biopsy company, mm -hmm. something that's been tried for a number of years and has yet to work. Uh, but basically, being able to detect, detect cancer, as you said, either the moment you have it or even predictively that you might be at risk for it by just sampling your blood. Uh, we don't have that capability yet, but the technical challenges are largely solved in a sense, in that we know what we need to do to get there, and so I'm very confident that that uh, this technology will exist. We hope Grail will be the developers of it, but it's a very high-risk proposition. What about gene editing? You're also invested in a company called Editas. At, at, at what point uh, will we have to start talking about the ethical issues around this technology? Well, I think it's never too soon to talk about that. Uh, the reality is that we can edit genes right now. Uh, that uh, CRISPR technology, etc. cetera, uh, we've invested in a number of companies there. Um, but I think there's a flip side to that coin. There are scary things about new technologies. Uh, fire could be scary uh, because it could burn down your house. But, and gene editing can be scary for all of the reasons you can imagine. At the same time, it can be used potentially to cure children of cystic fibrosis. And I think the positives of that will far outweigh the negatives. You've had some opinions about Theranos, and since we last spoke, it's only gotten worse for Theranos. Should Elizabeth Holmes still be running that company? That is up to the shareholders, I would say, of Theranos. Uh, I don't see how it gets better from here, though. Really? So you don't think that they can turn it around? Like, is there, is there no hope? I don't know what there is to turn around. The technology apparently doesn't exist. Maybe I don't have all the facts, but um, I don't know what there is to turn around. The public markets haven't been kind to the biotech sector. What do you think of that? How is it impacting earlier stage investments? I think the public markets are always wrong in the short term, usually right in the long term. Hmm. And I think if you look, generally speaking, uh, long term prospects for biotech are strong. Uh, Biotech, like any sector, falls in and out of favor over time, uh, maybe slightly out of favor now. Uh, but the reality is that that sector is going to transform the, not only the length, but the quality and uh, duration of our lives. And so we're very bullish. Tony Fidel recently less left Nest somewhat unceremoniously. What went wrong? And should we be worried about the future of Nest no. within Alphabet? I wouldn't be worried. I think it was reported as unceremoniously, but uh, the fact of the matter is how many hugely successful founders still work at the big companies that acquired them. Uh, um, Steve and Chad founded YouTube, and they're not at Google anymore. So it wasn't shocking to me that Tony decided he wanted to go and do uh, something new, and Nest continues on, uh, and will continue on. But isn't the ideal to have a founder-led company? At least that's the ideal that's uh, perpetuated in Silicon No, I don't know if it's the ideal. I think the reality is that there are different leaders for different times. Eric Schmidt was the CEO of Google at the right time, and was an outstanding CEO. Now Larry's the CEO, and many would argue that this is the right time for him to be in that position. So I think uh, it, it depends is the answer. Speaking of the environment, you guys are investors in Uber. Uber just raised uh, multi-billions of dollars. I've read about this. <laughs> Didi raising billions of dollars. Uh, I, I just uh, Mark Andreessen and his, his, his firm just raised a billion and a half dollars. Are we past the idea of a downturn, or are we still in one? Where are we? I I think, again, it depends on, uh, it's, it's that old adage, the difference between a recession and a depression is uh, recessions when you're out of work and a depression is when I'm out of work. It depends on your point of view. So venture capitalists have had a pretty easy time raising money uh, for the most part, I would say, especially successful ones like Mark. Uh, but he should always
always have a pretty easy time raising money as long as he's successful. So that doesn't shock me. Uber um, raising lots of money. It's a hugely successful company on a tear, so that's not very surprising either. Are there other companies getting left behind, though, that can't raise? Um, I don't know if they're getting left behind, but rationality is returning over the last six months to the market. And I think what you'll see is companies, rather than raising money on what they might do, will be raising money on what they have done. Uh, and you'll probably see more IPOs over the next 18 months than we've seen, which has been basically zero over the last six to 10 months. Speaking of different leaders for different times, there's a presidential election happening right now. And I'm curious, what do you think Hillary Clinton means for Silicon Valley? What do you think Donald Trump means so for I'm, Silicon Valley? Yeah, it's a great question. I'm not super political. I hope whatever leader that we choose collectively uh, becomes a lot more thoughtful uh, about the issues and less headline grabbing and more leadership. And I'm not convinced that we're at that place yet. And so I think. What, what do you mean? Well, I think it, I think we all need to get involved, to get informed on the issues. There's some really important and sometimes tragic things going on in the world right now, and we need to be informed about those things and at least vote, and not just bicker online and yell at each other over Facebook or Twitter, but instead actually look at the plans and proposals and decide what makes sense for you and your family and your life and friends, and, and at least vote, maybe do more than that.